okay so uh, in the last session we were discussing about the cyber safety and we discussed also about social engineering and how to recognize file or malicious file and website now the next thing that we are going to discuss is about penetration testing so we'll be starting with what is penetration testing uh, ethical hacking versus malicious activities vulnerability assessment versus penetration testing overview of penetration testing process hacking your first android device so i'll show you that how uh, you can do a pen test on android device so just a small practical i have embedded in between uh, we'll be gathering some information about uh, different organizations so that practical also will look into right so the very first thing uh, is penetration testing so what do you guys think what is penetration testing ethical hacking great yep i can say it is ethical hacking check if the system is vulnerable great okay so penetration testing is what it is a process in which you check all the vulnerabilities of a system of a network or web application mobile application apis iot devices anything right so why we uh, what is uh, like what we do there is a process which we follow right in that process we have to find out like the code that the developer has written or the design of the network if it is safe are there any loopholes present or not right so what can be done let's say i have a router now the router at your home uh, like if you have uh, routers at your home you are connected to your router so by default the password is admin and admin right so if i'm wandering somewhere and i'm uh, just roaming here and there and i just uh, like switch down my wi-fi and i found some routers so i can check entering admin and admin right or there are different vendors like nowadays you have vendors like jio and airtel in india right so their routers they have some specific password right they follow a pattern like not airtel but jio follows uh airtel follows a pattern like they give you password something like air and your phone numbers first four six digits right that is the password they set now geo they have the password written on the back side of their device right so if i try that maybe i'll be connecting to your network right or the network which i'm finding yep so that is also a vulnerability right so it is not even a vulnerability but a flaw in the design or implementation yes now let's say there is a developer right i'm not talking about any code uh, hardcore coding i'm not talking about any apis or anything i'm just giving you an example whenever you write code you are developing a software right a website a software so there are things that you write in the comments right so you write a hash or double for, uh, forward slash to comment out the things now why we why developers they do comment because they want to know or they want to tell that what this code is doing right though they don't show it to you but it is written now sometimes what happens uh developers they create different credentials different usernames and passwords right so those usernames and passwords are hard coded in the code right they are written in the code because they think that will uh, forget so for some time 
we'll just write it uh, while we are coding and at that time they forget to remove it so attacker will find out the uh, the credentials and attacker will be able to log in get the administrator uh, privileges and done your website is in the hands of attacker yep so that's why we do penetration testing right finding out all these small vulnerabilities small uh, mistakes which are done then who's a penetration tester the person who performs penetration testing is a penetration tester and it's not the one person who is performing the testing it's the whole team who is performing the testing penetration testers are like the people who are working into different domains it's not that uh, you are a penetration tester who is working into a single domain you can be working into network domain you are uh, you might be good at networking and finding out vulnerabilities with the network so it is uh, like you are penetration tester of a network you can be a penetration tester of web api mobile iot devices you can be it can be cloud as well right so pen testing is done on all these domains so you are you can like go for any domain you want and you like right like mainly the people who transition to uh, cyber security so if developer is transitioning to cyber security so th they use web because they have developed lots of applications now they are good with developing so they can just go and find out vulnerabilities in the web part right so those are people who are working into web there are people who are uh, who are working into it who are good with networks right so they can work with networking domain right the people who are developing the mobile applications they can do the pen testing and mobile de uh, mobile devices also and mobile applications also the iot device developers people who are working into cloud so it can be any domain right so the person who performs the pen testing that person is known as penetration tester now what is the difference between ethical hacking and malicious activities so we can say malicious activity as unethical hacking first thing permission in unethical hacking or malicious activities if you are doing so you don't uh, have the permission and you don't even ask for permission right in ethical hacking you will get permission to perform the pen testing or the hacking right so that is first thing now in ethical hacking we follow a process right there is whole documentation thing happening the scope is set do you guys know what is scope okay whenever you are doing pen testing so a scope is set right uh, let's say like we also do pen testing for different clients over all over the world so when they ask us for doing pen testing so they will give us a scope right let's say you are pen testing infosec train you are a penetration tester and i ask you that pen test infosec trains website so it's not that the whole website you have to test i will give you a place where you have to test right so i'll give you infosec train slash events test this place only so you cannot go out of this place right the page slash events is the only page that you have to test right i give you infosec train slash admin so you can test only only the admin portal now in that you have different types of testing right like we discussed 
black box gray box and white box remember in black box pen testing i will not give you any information about the website i'll just give you that this is our domain infosec train you have to test infosec train slash admin start testing now you have to do what you have to gather information by yourself whatever information you are getting you have to use that information try to get the access try to get the credentials do any attack before uh, like brute force attack do any password cracking attacks just find out information by yourself and do the attack and then give me the report what you found if you are able to exploit any vulnerability if there was any vulnerability or not right when we are talking about the gray box testing in gray box i'll give you a bit of information right now what information i'm giving you uh, i'll give you that the server is running apache apache server is there and the technologies that we are using now find out the vulnerability so it will be easier for you you don't have to gather too much of information so when you are getting partial information from the client that is gray box testing client gives all information so i'll give you in white box pen testing you have all the information 100 percent information right uh, you have the credentials i will give you the admin credentials right i'll give you the source code right i'll give you all the technologies uh, on which the website is built right so you have the credentials you can log in you have the source code you can uh, try checking the source code if in the code there is any problem right you have all the technologies so the technologies that we are using if there is any uh, vulnerability related to any specific version that we are using so that also you can find out right so these are the things that happen in penetration testing right unethical hacking can i say it will be only black box because in unethical hacking we are not asking for permissions right we don't have any permission we just have to find out uh, the information that is available over the internet right and then we have to find out the vulnerabilities exploit them get the access right so that is unethical hacking next thing the need of penetration testing now you know what is penetration testing how it's done and what who is penetration testing so why you need penetration testing any idea so why penetration testing is needed first thing to find out the flaws or weakness which combinedly we call vulnerability any loophole loopholes flaws or weakness in the system those are called vulnerabilities and for finding out vulnerabilities we do penetration testing second thing we want to find out the vulnerabilities before it is exploited by any external person so that it impacts our business right so let's say there is a vulnerability in Amazon right so there is no rate limiting in Amazon let's assume that what is rate limiting first thing anyone see uh, we are not talking in terms of product but rate limiting is what uh, whenever you visit any website so it is a traffic for the website right you are what you are a traffic right so for limiting the network traffic we don't want lots and lots of requests right 
So if there are lots and lots of requests, there will be some capacity of the server who, which is hosting the website, right? It's not that the capacity is too much, right? It can be big, but it cannot be infinite. Right? So when we are talking about the traffic, let's say your server has one terabyte of RAM or even let's say 100 terabytes of RAM, right? So it can pretty much handle lots of traffic, but not very much, right? Like Google might be having uh, lots of uh, RAM, lots of resources, but still there was DDoS attack that happened on Google. If you remember, if you have heard about it. And this attack was the biggest DDoS attack that was ever recorded, right? So it was around 4.6 GB request per second. Or it was like uh, around 4.6 million requests per second. So that much bandwidth it was taking, right? So 4.6 million requests per second. So think about it. If it was not recorded, if it would uh, be done on any website, any small company, so the website would be down, right? Service would be unavailable, right? So that's why we need rate limiting, right? So if uh, the example which we were talking about that Amazon is not having rate limiting, someone may do a DDoS attack on it, right? Now after doing the DDoS attack, it's not the attack that will uh, make business loss, but it will be the downtime of the website. Website will be down, people won't be able to uh, order something from it. So people will move on to someone else some other vendor like Flipkart, right? And people started uh, ordering from Flipkart. So maybe some people will not come back to Amazon because they found uh, low prices on Flipkart, right? So that is the business impact. That's why we need to do penetration testing. Then there are two terms. You know about penetration testing. What is vulnerability assessment then? Okay. And that's what we are doing in penetration testing also, I think. We are reporting the vulnerabilities. Once the penetration testing is done, so we are finding out what uh, vulnerabilities were there. We are creating a report, writing all the things in it and done. Then, see, the thing is, in vulnerability assessment, you never exploit a vulnerability, right? So the first thing that happens is you think there is a vulnerability, right? Uh, recently, what happened? There is one application, move it, move it transfer, right? So there was a vulnerability in move it transfer, right? Which was giving direct access to your off device to the attacker, right? An SQL injection vulnerability was there. So a vulnerability arrived in any application, right? So what you do, you will scan that. You will scan your environment if your environment is safe. So you are just finding out if the vulnerability is there or not, but you are not exploiting it, right? In Microsoft, uh, there was a vulnerability, right? It was uh, with the name Folina, right? In that uh, vulnerability, what was happening? I'll send you a Word document. You'll open that Word document in your device. I'll get the access of your device, right? And that was in uh, like uh, there was there is one troubleshooter that you have seen, right? So in that troubleshooter. 
there was the vulnerability so what happened there are lots of vulnerability scanners using those vulnerability scanners like uh, there is one from rapid 7 right rapid 7 is the organization there are uh, there is vulnerability scanner from that then for web there is acunetx so lots of vulnerability scanners so you just scan the scanner will give you the report that your network your web application might be vulnerable to these kind of vulnerabilities just this only this is vulnerability assessment in lemon terms now this vulnerability assessment report goes to the penetration testing uh, team right now when it goes to the penetration testing team so pen testing team will look into the vulnerability assessment report and then they will find out that if the vulnerability is exploitable or not there are many times like uh, as you are talking about log 4j right so log 4j version 1 was not vulnerable right version 2 was vulnerable right so what happened uh, all the vulnerability scanners like uh, we were doing pen testing for one organization so all their vulnerability scanner they uh, they used so they were giving that log 4j was the issue right there may be log 4j but it was not exploitable so vulnerability sc scanner just looked that they are using log 4j right so on that basis it gave your systems might be vulnerable uh, vulnerable with this vulnerability but it's it's something that pen testers they find out if it is exploitable or not see bug hunters are different people bug hunters are the ones who have uh, like you can you can be a bug hunter so you can create yourself an account on bug crowd or hacker one and then you can start testing so there will be a scope given for you right you have to follow that scope there will be some rules written in those rules you just have to find out if the uh, like what tools are allowed like sometimes the scanners are not allowed automated scanners you don't have to use them then there are some vulnerabilities they which are already reported so those vulnerabilities are also written there so you have to give something apart from that right so those are bug hunters right so they are doing the testing right they are doing penetration testing they will exploit the vulnerability right perfect so that is the difference between penetration testing and vulnerability assessment in one you are exploiting in other you are just scanning right perfect now the types of penetration testing you know white box black box gray box so in white box pen testing the other name for white box pen testing it is open box pen testing as well right black box closed box penetration testing and gray box it is a combination why we are saying that it is a combination of white box and uh, black box okay so why it is a combination of black box and white box because in white box we give 100 percent information all the information to the tester in black box we are giving no information so it's somewhere it sits in between and that's why some things uh, some information the pen tester do not have to find out but still you have to do the information gathering right so that's why it sits in between that's why we say it is a combination of black box and white box right 
Now, do you know that black box penetration testing is further of two types? Blind and double blind? Okay, now when we are talking about the blind testing, right? So we are uh, simulating the methodologies of real attacker, right? You will get uh, no information provided, right? And it is a time consuming and expensive process, right? But when we are talking about double blind, so in double blind, only few people in the organization are aware about that uh, penetration testing is being conducted right and what you are testing in here you are testing the organization's security monitoring incident identification and the response procedures that is double blind if any incident happens how they will respond to it and if they are able to monitor or detect your attempt to penetrate or not that is double blind testing right now when we are talking about uh, white box white box is also of two types so it is announced and unannounced right So when we are talking about the announced testing, right? So we are compromising the systems in it, but with the full cooperation and knowledge of IT staff. So the IT staff knows about that the testing is going on, right? So what we are testing, we are testing the existing security infrastructure for the vulnerabilities and we are involving the client organizations, security staff and pen testing team as well. Right? Now, when we are talking about unannounced testing, right? So, in unannounced testing, what we are doing? We are compromising the system on the client network without the knowledge of IT security staff, right? So only the upper management is aware of the test is going on. Right? Yep. Like double blind. But in double blind, you are not getting any information, right? It's a part of black box. So these are the types of pen testing. Now, the thing is, what can be tested? What things are there which we can test? In cyber security, in penetration testing field, what things can be tested? Web application you can test. Yep. Mobile application you can test. Mobile device you can test. You can test network. Right? You can test uh, devices network devices which we call perimeter devices as well iot devices you can test cloud you can test right so these are the things that we can test right infrastructure which is again the part of network 
right uh okay now when we are talking about these testings right so we have different types of testing right so the testing can be goal oriented compliance oriented red team based so have you guys heard of anything like this what is goal oriented when testing So goal oriented pen testing is a type of pen testing which is driven by goals. So the objectives are defined rather than defining the scope of the target. So you will get the objective like gain remote access to any internal network, right? Uh, or gain access to credit card information, right? So these are the things that you will get in goal oriented pen testing then we also have something compliance based right it's a bit higher level but yeah you should know about it now compliance based pen testing it is driven by compliance requirements see uh, compliances are what compliances you have, like organizations they follow compliances right uh, you use google pay Yep. For online payment, Paytm, Google Pay, Phone Pay, lots of in US. Uh, there is Venmo you use, right? So for different countries, different things are there. But what we have, all these organizations, they are PCI DSS compliant. This is the compliance, right? Now PCI DSS says that you cannot leak or give information about your uh, customer to anyone. Even if they have your information, they have your every, every information of yours, right? Now what they do, they have to keep your information safe, right? no one should be able to get your information so pci dss is what it is a compliance right for payment card industry right so when we do compliance based testing maybe let's say uh, you are doing testing for google pay or phone pay or paytm so the organization may ask you that you have to test our application for PCI DSS requirements, right? So that is compliance based testing. In this, we tend to find out if the organization is properly following the compliance or not. Right? great now there are things which is related to red team assessment as well anyone now a red team assessment is what guys it is adversary based testing Okay, so uh, 
Have you watched that movie, guys? Batman. How many of you have watched Batman? Yep. So the adversary for Batman. Who was the adversary? Joker. Yep. That is our adversary. Now, uh, let's say you give payment services, right? Like you are the owner of Google Pay. So who is the adversary for you? The other people in the market, the other opponents, right? Even the attackers who are trying to attack, right? And uh, who are trying to find out vulnerabilities and uh, exploit the vulnerability in your organization, take the excess, stop your business. All those are adversaries. So red team assessment is what? First thing, it is more stealthy as compared to pen testing. Pen testing is noisy. Right. So you have to tell that pen testing is going on in my environment. Right. If you don't tell, lots of alerts will be generated and it will affect right the monitoring solutions and all so they are so at that time you have to just uh, power them off so the thing is uh, this one is stealthy stealthy means low noise less noise right not too much of alerts not too much of data sending right so you have to find out you have to be undercover right first thing now it is adversary based so that means what we are doing we are simulating or we do emulation of attacker of adversaries right you might have heard about apts advanced persistent threats Heard about it? So advanced persistent threats are what? Uh, when attackers, they stay inside your system for a very long time. They just observe that which websites you are visiting and what you are doing, right? So they just observe, right? So there are APT groups, right? So what we do and whenever we do red team assessment in that we just uh, follow the steps of those APT groups, whatever techniques, whatever tools they are using, we just follow all of them and see if we are able to get the access of the organization's network, web application and or any whatever we are testing, right? So that emulation of adversary is known as red team assessment. Good with it. Now the penetration testing process, right? Now, formally, when you do pen testing, this is the process that we follow, right? Uh, planning and reconnaissance, then scanning, gaining access or exploitation, maintaining the access, analysis and reporting, right? Whenever you are doing pen testing, normal phases are first, reconnaissance. Then scanning, right? Then after scanning, you have enumeration. After enumeration, you have system exploitation. Or you can say system hacking as well. And then you have covering the tracks. Right. So these are the general five steps. Right. Now, the first one is reconnaissance. So before doing any penetration testing, you do what you gather information about the target. Right. So you have to find out 
information yep we call it footprinting as well right so we have to gather the information about the target and then you will move on to the scanning now whenever we are gathering the information about the target so generally the output is IP address yep now with from that IP address you can find out more information right you can find out domain name right you can find out how the network is structured everything right so you have to do the reconnaissance first then we have scanning now what scanning is in scanning we are trying to find out the operating system of the target the open ports the services running in that yep so i can say that port is what uh, endpoint of any communication right so what we have a service is running so let's say your remote desktop protocol right you take remote access of devices so these are two devices they are using same service so port is open here a port is open here right now from this port this port will be connected and you get the remote access like you use any desk you use team viewer or ultra viewer any kind of application you use so they will open a port in your system that port will be opened and then after that your connection will be established right so in scanning what i'm doing i'm trying to find out what service is running what port is open and i'm also trying to find out what service version is running the operating system of the target yep so let me show you quick scanning okay so we have uh, one other machine running right i want to find out what all ports are open in it so i'll just quickly write in map and the ip address of the target machine so it gave me all the ports that are open yep so the port number 21 is tcp it is open and the service that is running is ftp right 22 23 right all these services and all these ports are open this is what this is scanning now scanning can be done in depth as well by using different options right if you want to find out the operating system and you want to find out all the ports that are open so you can use hyphen p hyphen hyphen o right so it will give you all the total ports and it gave you the operating system details as Linux. The target operating system is Linux, and yes, it is Linux. Yep, got it. That is scanning, right? then you have gaining access or exploitation so after scanning you are in scanning you have found uh, lots of information you found which uh, service is running on which port 
now uh, you you will also find out the service version let's say ftp is running so which version of ftp is running like 2.3.4 is running right so you'll just hit the internet and you will find out that if there is any vulnerability related to ftp this version 2.3.4 if the, it is present then what you will do exploit correct so that after exploiting the vulnerability you will get the access of the system so that is what we do in gaining access or exploitation phase then the next one is maintaining access right maintaining access means in simple terms let me tell you uh, everyone has used rdp remote desktop protocol for windows right like remotely connecting to any other device getting remote access yep okay now when we are talking about rdp right you have to enter username and password yep now if let's say the username and password is default let's say someone ha is using the username and password as admin admin so you don't have to do anything you just have to enter that username and password and you will get access to their system right but let's say one day uh, the person changed the password then what you will do will you get the access of that system no you won't great so what do you do in maintaining access once you get the access once you found that the username and password you have found so what you will do you will put a backdoor over there right so backdoor is what another way of connecting so even if the person changes the password of their rdp connection right the password is changed you won't be able to access from from the rdp connection but you will be able to access that device from the back door that you have planted right so you will uh, download and install some software hide that software so that using that software you can get access of that device even after the password is changed right that is maintaining access right and the last one is analysis and reporting so whatever you have found what all vulnerabilities you have found how you have exploited them you will analyze it you will write the summary about it then the whole theoretical part all the uh, vulnerabilities you have found and the screenshots of the vulnerabilities how you exploited them everything you will put and share it with uh the softwares that you can plant is rat remote access trojans right so trojans are what trojans are the malwares which gives you backdoor access right so remote access trojans are the best one that you can use lots of uh, even if you want to use rats so you can uh, just find them out in github like for androids there are rats for windows there are rats present right linux devices so that's the thing right now there are different methodologies given by a different organization now there is nest so nest gave a methodology that first you have to do planning then discovery then you have to do the attack then after attack additional discovery 
find out more information right uh, do more information gathering find uh, do the scanning and then do the attack right and then at the end once you have done the discovery now you are not finding out anything then you will just create a report and do the reporting right so this is given by nest right then there is uh, ethical hackers methodology as well right in which first permission right so permission is a pre attack step right before doing the attacking you have to take permissions that if we can test or not right first you will get the in, uh, permission then you will perform recon so you will get the you'll find out information you will do information gathering from lots of uh, resources available online right and then you have to do scanning and enumeration so scanning finding out the open port so you can use nmap like nmap is given here then you will gain the access after finding out the information you will exploit the vulnerability gain the access of the system if you got root access that's fine if you didn't got the administrative privileges or root privileges then you will do escalation of privileges what is escalation of privileges anyone see sometimes it's not only related to the root privileges now what happens uh, let's say this is user 1 this is user 2 and this is root user right so sometimes you, uh, like user 1 has different privileges as compared to user 2 so user 1 wants to use right the privileges of user 2 so user 1 will use some techniques and user 1 will escalate its privileges right that is privilege escalation but it is horizontal right horizontal privilege escalation we call it when user 1 wants all the privileges and wants to be root so user 1 will run some code run some exploit and then user 1 will become root so this is known as vertical privilege escalation right so privilege escalation means elevating your privileges to a higher level or even at the same level but something different right so there is a database engineer who wants the access of the web server right so only the developers they have the access of the web server so maybe uh, some privilege escalation techniques will be used by the database engineer right right great then the next step maintaining access so maintaining access is same right so we'll deploy back doors and we got we'll get the access of the system even if the vulnerability is patched right then the next one is covering tracks and placing back doors what is covering the tracks see covering the tracks means whenever you are hacking let's say you hacked uh, some organization now when you are hacking that organization do you want to get caught no you don't want to get caught right so there are forensics people who are working in the organization right uh, you might have watched that tv show cid right so there are uh, people who are into forensics so those are the people who are into uh, like criminal forensics but here it is digital forensics right so you have digital footprints as well whatever you are doing everything is getting logged every event is getting created whatever you are doing right so that's why we have to cover the tracks right we have to remove the evidence if you have placed any backdoor remove that backdoor if you have made changes to any program remove that program you have to make like we are doing ethical hacking so you have to make the system back to its original state back to the state which it was before the testing 
right so that is covering the tracks and then the last one is reporting so you just have to create the report and submit it then there is other methodology as well in which uh, the general methodology right in which you do the planning and scoping so the very first thing that happens when a pen test starts so you have to plan the pen test right after planning the pen test you have to set the scope right so there are people working in the organization who will set the scope of the pen test that what things to be tested what things not to be tested right then uh, information gathering and will happen right scanning will happen at that time at the same time uh, the vulnerability id will be found that which vulnerability which uh, which id will be applicable for the vulnerability which is in the system or the network then the attack and exploit will happen so you will attack right you will perform the exploit uh, so right so taking advantage of the vulnerability is known as exploit right so what you will do you will take the advantage of the ex of the vulnerability and that is known as exploit right then reporting and communication so reporting means that you will create the report communication means you will communicate with the senior staff and maybe you will give some uh, patching uh, like what patches should be applied what security measures should be taken right so that is reporting and communication right perfect now the next thing that we have is we'll see how we can gather information from different sources right so when we are gathering information let's say i ask you to gather information so what is the best tool that is available at your disposal so google is the first thing that is available right now in google if i'm searching for let's say let's say i search for prashant right so i'm getting lots of results how many results in total we are getting 7,79,000 yep great now when we are getting these results right in these results the first thing at the top just a second okay now in these results the first thing at the top that you can see this is known as url always remember this thing this is url the one in blue that you can see this is known as title and below it a bit description is given so this description is known as text right so these are the three parts of the output that you get whenever you search anything right now what we have these are not known as google docs see google docs are what Google Docs are the ways of efficiently using Google, right? So if I write in URL and the name. So in the URL, wherever the name is Prashant, you will get the output. So before we were getting the results 7,79,000. Now I'm getting 5,19,000. So less number of results, right? then if i write in title only two lakh 
2000 results right if i try writing in text 487000 so in title we are getting least number of results right so is it looking like uh, we are trying to narrow down our scope the search scope or search parameter there is one website exploit database let me and this exploit database has all the exploits present out there right so it also takes care of google hacking database right so google hacking database it gives you all the docs right that you can use right for efficiently using google or you can say we are cheating google right let's say uh, I, I just uh, want to download a movie so i can write movie and let's say titanic right and the website drive.google.com right so it will give me all the google drives which have a uh, movie titanic uploaded so you can download right any other movie also you can name right so that is what that is how you efficiently use google when you want the things specific things right like google from google hacking database if you just pick up pick up anything like entitle index of private dot properties right if i use this right so you got the index of private properties right parent directory private dot properties copy dot src some kind of code that's written right private dot xml xml document and it gave you netbeans.org so it's related to netbeans website right so that's how you get the information the very first step right right and in this let's say i'm writing the domain name infosectrain.com search for it and it will give you the information about infosec train so this is the domain of infosec train the registrar is godaddy.com and it was registered on this date expires on this date it will be updated on this right you are getting the name servers as well right the registrant contact administrative contact as well the technical contact also right and the raw data right so this is what this is who is right who is gives you like limited information right so apart from that you can use netcraft now if i write infosectrain.com here and search for it so three things it is giving me delivery.infosectrain.com uh, lms.infosectrain.com and www.infosectrain.com in this uh, it is also giving me the operating system right and the operating system is linux so we can see it here right i opened the site report and in site report what we are trying to find we are trying to see first thing we got the ip address of the organization isn't it good for the attacker that attacker found the ip address yep great now the next thing what we are getting the operating system was linux ip address is this the web server is apache more information yes great 
then it is also giving you the server side technologies used php xml ssl is used then client technologies the javascript is used jquery is used for blogs wordpress self hosted then php application rss feeds web stats google webmaster tools then the encoding utf8 is used the compression scheme gzip right so maximum times uh, for maximum of websites whenever you will see so you will see the compression scheme as gzip or deflate right so it's gzip that is being used right so this is netcraft apart from that uh, we use let's say i'm opening a test website right now in this test website can you see something like this this thing two is written yep so this is an extension of you uh, which i'm using and it is webalizer which gives you the technologies right so i can like open any website infosextrain.com and it will give me the technologies that are used for building infosectrain.com's website now in snowview what you can do you can find out emails right so if i do domain search let's say right uh, infosectrain.com and search right so you will get information about the people right what all people are working right all domain emails you are getting all the emails that are available right So you can find it out for any organization and you can create your yourself an account for free right so you will get 50 email searches per month free there is another website which is dns dumpster now dns dumpster also gives you a huge amount of information right let's say i'm searching for tesla.com So let's see what results it will give me. Okay. The GOIP of host locations, the DNS servers I'm getting, right? And then I'll be getting the host records, right? These are all the subdomains that I'm getting. right like vpn2.tesla.com darkfield.tesla.com vpn1.tesla.com right all the things then one best thing is it started from here right the tesla.com then what it gave me uh it gave me the DNS information, the whole DNS, how it is structured, what all IEPs are there, the whole structure it is giving me, right? It also gave me the D MX records of DNS, right? So those MX records also I'm getting, and then the A records, right? 
huge list of A records. Like you can see all these are the A records. If I zoom in, so origin-mobile.tesla.com, then warehouse, mta.emails, the IP addresses, lots of information. Right? So this is the tool which can help you in getting the information. Right? Now there are tools that are available in GitHub also. Right? That sometimes we use. Right? So there is a tool with the name Eagle OSINT. Right? So we can use Eagle OSINT. Right? for finding out the information right so let's say i want to do i want to find out find email with name right so 03 enter name let's say i'm giving my name let's see what information it finds out about me Okay, there are some errors generated. Let's try. Something else. Hmm. Okay, so it's finding the usernames as Ashish. Let's see how many it will find out. So maximum it can find out is 71. So 71 places it will be searching. Yeah, Harvester is a bit old now. So... It's better to use some other tools that are available. Okay, so while it is searching, let me show you one more tool. Okay, it gave me the output. So on all these websites, there is account for the person with the name Ashish, right? So it can be someone else as well, right? HackerOne, BuzzFeed, SlideShare, Pastebin, Canva, Code Academy, Cash.me, Ashish.Live General, The Instructable, so Trip, Skyscanner, lots of websites. So all these places, they have a user with the name Ashish, right? Then uh, there is one more tool which is with the name Spiderfoot, right? So just give me a second. Let me power on my other Kali Linux. Any questions, anyone? Perfect. Okay, so there is a tool Spiderfoot which gathers information about the organizations and it is a really very helpful tool which will help you in gathering the information, right? So I have written Spiderfoot-l127.0.0.1 colon 5000. So on port number 5000 on my loopback IP, it is hosted, right? Now what I will do, I'll open my browser 
and 127.0.0.1 column 5000 and this is the page of uh, spider foot right now in spider foot what you can do you can create a new scan just name the scan anything like a abc or the reconnaissance or anything right your scan target so the website's link once you will do that we can see uh, let me show you the scan that is already running right so this is a scan for some uh, one website that i did and it found malicious ip addresses also lots of data it found right so you can see that data here now the best thing about this is it will create a graph for you can you see this graph like like let me switch to the light mode now in this graph it's just finding out more and more information right that how it is connected what things are connected the subdomains the ip addresses everything so it just became too complex because i just started the scan and left it so the ip addresses right the places which are connected and the main place will be in red color i'm not uh, able to find it out let me sh just show you where it is okay it's hidden somewhere right so this is how sorry this is how your graph is created right all the points are connected now using these points you can find out that how we will be doing the exploit right you can move them here and there you can find out the path that if you get let's say you're uh, getting the access of this ip 1497.72.227.77 it's understandable that this ip does not have a lot of information right from this ip how you can take the access of the actual domain right? great this is how you gather information right so there are lots and lots of websites lots and lots of tools that you can use to find out information and it is very difficult to remember the names isn't it you cannot like we use it every day that's why we remember the names of maximum of tools but not every single website or every single tool right so for that we have OSINT framework Let me check if I'm able to. Okay, so this one is not working right now, I think. Let me check it from Kali Linux browser. Yeah, so this website is, uh, I think it's down right now. So OSINT framework is what? It has sources like this uh, screenshot that's which I have taken. You can see this. That public records, business records, transportation, geolocation tools, search engines, right? Uh, archives. Everything it is able to find out. Right? So that is what that is your OSINT framework. OSINT stands for open source intelligence. Right? Now open source intelligence means the 
information that is available freely so in raw format we call it data we get we make it useful then it is information right and then when we find out more information about it it becomes intelligence right so if i'm writing Two seven six two zero two three, right? So this is data, nothing raw format. I'm saying that it is a date, right? Twenty seventh of June, twenty twenty three. Now it became information. On this day, there will be webinar, and in webinar will be discussing about uh, the pen testing. Now that is intelligence. right clear everyone so that is open source intelligence intelligence that is available on freely over the internet right 